yeah those are our lights from up above so apologize for the noise the fireworks in the background it is the fourth of july and the second coat of marine varnish is on and it is done complete let it cure and then put everything back on that look at that reflection the lights above crazy my wife's a genius when it comes to this stuff i just build things she makes them pretty we have pretty children we do have pretty children good job on this honey thank you good job fantastic on this. i'll let that cure overnight and see what it looks like tomorrow but there you go one 10 foot long farmhouse table despite georgia's humidity despite the humidity in georgia yeah wow okay i found all this really cool uh set of plans and things on um uh, on YouTube from a guy named DIY Niels and he did a, a farmhouse table that was for sale in Pottery Barn for several thousand dollars and um, he recreated it and built it himself for less than three hundred dollars so I'm taking my stab at it too As you know I'm not about to spend several thousand dollars on a table all right uh, so we're gonna start with uh, the four by sixes right here we got some big boards and I found all of this stuff right here in Atlanta uh, from a combination of Metro building products. There you go. And also um, I got the poplar for the tabletops uh, from Peach State Lumber in Kennesaw. I got this hundred plus year white oak, um, which is also down here from my parents' property in an old barn abandoned in the woods and a um, little place I used to play as a kid and I got those from up there. So a combination of white oak, antique white oak, poplar, and Douglas fir uh, is what's going to make up this table. So a unique combination and I hope it looks that good when we're done with it. But first thing we're going to do, I do have the plans right here. Um, so I have changed the measurements because this table was an eight foot table, therefore all the measurements were for that. And I changed it because I'm building a 10 foot table. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and get started with this and see how it turns out. Let's cut some wood. Much with any woodworking project, we've had an abrupt change of plans. So we've got our 15, 16 inch wide, uh, two inch thick poplar boards set aside for the time being, uh, because we've got some work to do with this old um, oak that's gonna run down the center. And you can see that uh, we're gonna lose about two feet of this, because this is a 12 foot board. We're building a 10 foot table. But uh, we've got uh, we've got to square it up, and then we've got to also figure out how to straighten up some of these lines on the sides. Since I don't have a joiner, what I'm going to have to use is either a skill saw, which I'm using my grandfather's old skill saw, still best skill saw I've ever owned. Craftsman, 100% metal, real heavy and uh, cuts true and straight. But it's gonna take a combination of things in order for it to get as straight as some of these timbers because well, it's over 100 years old. So I'm gonna square up the end and cut off the other end and see what we have. squared and you can see we have a little little bend up lip here we have to plane that down and all the way down here on the other end of this over a hundred year old piece of oak 
we have, uh, we're gonna be getting rid of all of that. So that's good because you can see it flares out in width here and is even a worse bend and it's cracked and we're gonna be able to lose all of, all of that bad stuff and be left pretty good looking piece of board. All this dirt here will come out once we give it a good sanding and brushing. Uh, don't wanna lose too much of that rough sawn though, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece now. Put it marked right here. 116 and 3 8 inch, 3 8 inches, which will allow for our two by fours um, on either end to be, uh, to act as uh, end pieces. Here's how I decided to straighten up both sides of this. I have a couple more pieces of it that I'm gonna end up using as well, but I have put uh, some straight edges. I gotta clamp this one down. I've already clamped this aluminum professional straight edge down, and I'm gonna run my skill saw down this chalk line uh, to get a perfectly straight edge on this side. Then I will use this side as a guide to uh, with measurements to do the same thing on the other side and get a straight edge on both. So we did have uh, some crack uh, in this one board that we got straightened up and all ready for joining, but this was a pretty big split and this piece here was pushing out uh, a good quarter of an inch. So I've uh, filled it with some Gorilla Wood Glue and clamped that guy down tight. Got a little run over on the bottom, but don't care, it's on the bottom. Uh, and we're gonna let that dry overnight. Okay. 
Okay, so I only have a 10 inch uh, miter saw. And if you're gonna do this particular build, you're gonna need a 12 inch. Um, it's a 10 inch sliding, but here's the thing. These four by sixes, it will not cut all the way through. Uh, you can see the two different colors uh, there of where I made the cuts. So what I'm having to do is cut the 45s on these four by sixes to go directly underneath and uh, support the tabletop and then turn them over, flip them around, bring them on the other end and cut through from the opposite direction. It is not ideal. You have to take it very, very slow to even just get close like I did right here. There's still a little bit of a lip there. It is, I mean, minuscule. You can't even really see it, but you can feel it. And I'm gonna have to sand that down. But if you got a 10 inch miter saw, only way you can do it. Uh, you're gonna have to add some spacers. Like I put some pressure treated two by four back here to move this uh, uh, timber off the rail. Because if you're back there, this piece of the miter saw right here is gonna come into contact with the wood. You're not gonna even get two inches, two inches deep in it. So to get it off the rail and get it out in here into the sliding portion, um, you're going to have to put something back here. I chose uh, the pressure treated two by four and then it's still up against the fence all the way, supported on this end. Again, you can see, I don't have all of these joiners and planers and giant table saws and things that a lot of people have. Uh, when working on this project, I did borrow a uh, DeWalt planer uh, from one of my neighbors who does a lot of woodworking. But when it comes to this, it's my workbench that my dad built for me and some, uh, <laughs> some creativity, I guess you would say. So, but we're still getting it done. All right, just uh, yet another example of um, a tool that I don't have that you need uh, to build this table quickly and, and easily. Um, I have a little tiny table saw as we mentioned earlier and uh, this section here is going to be the notched out section. Uh, in one of the videos online, um, the guy used a bandsaw and he just cut in and just went all the way down. Of course it was up on his edge, came right out, sanded it up, good to go. Um, so I'm going to have to do it uh, kind of like the way you would make a mortise or something. Um, I'm going to just have to run the skill saw back and forth a lot and then um, chisel it out and sand it and make it smooth. So. All right notched out all the way. You can see some of them even started coming out already. Did run one right down the middle for, uh, for most of it, uh, where the saw would reach, make, uh, get these guys out a little bit easier. Now we're gonna turn it up on the end and uh, knock them out. All right, got a lot of territory to cover here. So I did go with the one inch uh, chisel and I'm just gonna pick a good spot here with some, some thin ones. And there they go. All right, so it's all uh, notched up and I chiseled it out as best as I could. This is going on the bottom of the feet, so let's, let's be realistic here. All right, so here's how we attacked this. Uh, since there is no, um, no better way to do it really on a piece of wood this size if you don't own a lot of equipment. Um, and we have our profile here. The other way we did it on that one looks equally as good um, over here, but uh, underneath, huge difference. Uh, the other one's all rough from all the chiseling that we had to do. This one came out incredibly smooth using the circular saw, uh, just plunging it down in here and then cutting across. 
and then flipping the board, doing the same thing from the other side with the, the maximum that my seven inch blade would do, a seven and a quarter blade would do. And then, uh, and, and then flipping it over, chiseling out all the pieces, the debris in the other one looks like this, a little hard to clean up. The debris in this one looks like this. <laughs> so yeah, I choose the second version every time. Um, and uh, then using a Sawzall to cut down, cut under, all of that with a new blade to cut down here. And then uh, a rasp to uh, clean it up a little bit. And then orbital sander, smooth it right out. So there you go, second base done. Uh, got it all sanded up. Looks really good. It's super smooth to the touch now. And time to notch out this center piece where our 4x4 will sit. The stretcher will go right under there. And I did an inch and a quarter. I didn't want to go, I did a quarter more here than was asked for to emphasize it a little bit. So I didn't want to go um, quite as deep with this cut. Um, uh, two inches and then notch the other one two inches. So I did inch and a quarter. I'll do the other one uh, the same and it'll sit down in there and have a nice little uh, little hump here uh, to emphasize it. So now we're going to make a place for our four by four. Right, we get a little rasp and uh, get a little rasp action going in here. Clean out that last little bit of debris from the bottom. There is our notch for our 4x4. We'll do the same thing on the other end uh, of the table. Then we'll notch our 4x4s later on. kind of lumber and I'm speaking of the Douglas fir uh, rough cut so I mean it comes like this you know this this is a two by two and it really is two by two um, two by fours four by fours four by sixes and you can see how rough it it comes when you get it so with this you take an orbital sander sand it down and look what you're gonna get you still have your saw marks in there but it's smooth, smooth as glass, but you still get to keep those saw marks. And if you're staining this, it is going to be absolutely beautiful.
Okay, here is one of the ends uh, completely put together. Uh, the 4x4 four four will sit uh, right down in the bottom there. I've already tested that. Fits nice and snug, just perfect. I will do some notching on the 4x4 four four, uh, so that it sits uh, a little bit lower in there. Probably take out the same uh, bit that I did there. Um, and all the bolts are in. And we did four in the top of this 4x6, four, four in the top of that one, four in the bottom, four in the bottom, four in the side here, and four in the side there. And it is <laughs> so heavy. It's, <laughs> it's so heavy. But one down, one more to go like this, and then um, we will uh, do the stretchers in between. That will give us a surface to uh, surface to drape uh, the plastic over there and start assembling, figuring out what we want our top to look like. So I got some of the pieces cut for the other trestle and I will do the rest tomorrow. Moving on. So I made this boneheaded mistake today. Um, spent all the time on this on this big piece and uh, <laughs> cut the notch in the bottom instead of the top where it's supposed to go. So feeling like an idiot. It took me four hours to make that thing. Uh, good news is I apparently got fast at it because it took me one hour to make this his replacement um, with the notch in the right place. All right, so getting ready to make another one of those and everything's ready to go. When you don't have a vice or some of the standard things and you're just working in your garage like I am, um, you gotta get creative sometimes. So I've got uh, one of a bar clamp holding these two ends together checked the square already checked the uh the 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 measurements everything is good um we have the same you know exact same distance here to here here to here everything is marked and clamped down got this guy clamped down to here this guy bar clamped through here so it's good and solid and will allow me to start my drilling and you just keep adding pieces and adding clamps <laughs> just if you don't have a vice seriously you have lots of clamps 15 20 at least All right, so one of the things that I had to figure out on my own, and I'm going to save you guys some trouble with, um, these are four by sixes, true four by sixes, not three and a half by uh, five and a half. So what I had to figure out was where these uh, where these holes go um, to uh, to run the screws in on my own. I'm going to save you that trouble. On the six inch side, I came in an inch and a half from both ways and uh, drew a line, and on um, on the four inch uh, diameter, I came in one inch. So inch and a half this way and one inch this way. I connected all the lines and there are your four points, which will give you those four holes and they'll be perfectly centered on uh, the board below. Cool, save you some time.
well, almost through building the second one. But I can't get one or two of them down in there and I'm pretty sure that is not a good sign. Not good. Uh, I hope it still works when it stops smoking. Yikes. All right, both trestles assembled, bolted together, complete, checked for level, etc. And uh, now I have stretched them, uh, put them about eight foot apart so I can get the stretcher in there. And uh, I have notched out for the four by four, but I have not yet notched the four by four. So I've got to go back and uh, once I am absolutely positively sure of where they're gonna go, I'm gonna go back in and um, commit to it, uh, mark the four by four, and then I will notch it so it will sit down in there. And I'm also gonna take a, uh, a 45, um, probably a one inch by one inch 45 off the top here um, to eliminate that sharp edge, like over here. It's good design too. So here we are, starting to come together. All right, getting late, but I'm gonna wrap it up for the day and pick up again uh, tomorrow. Got the spacing all figured out for chairs, depth. Uh, changed up a little bit on the dimension between the two trestles uh, to give us some room that we were looking for and decided on a two inch overhang here on the uh, four by four. So I marked there on the other side and measured, I uh, got this exactly two inches and then marked that it was the top and I will go in and notch out um, I haven't figured that part out yet, but probably an inch and three quarters, maybe. Um, possibly two inches. Uh, and then we'll, eh, maybe an inch and three quarters. And, uh, and then I'll come back and put that down in there. On this end, uh, since it's an eight foot board, I marked two inches for overhang and I'll trim off the rest with the miter saw, mark the top, mark the sides and I will probably pick up on that in the morning uh, and uh, get that all cut and come back and get it uh, dropped in place. Not gonna uh, screw it or bolt it in yet because these things are so heavy that we're going to take it around back to our pergola by the pool and uh, put them in place first and I will assemble the trestles with the stretchers this one and the two two by fours that are going up here. I'll do that outside, and then um, and then we will also carry the tabletop out there and install it when we're done with that. All right. So what we did was uh, went ahead and marked this guy up while it was down there on the bottom, exactly where it's going to go, and I cut it to length, and then I did a one and a half inch mark on both sides, 45 off the sides, all on the miter saw. And now I have marked and uh, used a miter saw to cut the first cuts on our notches. They're gonna fit down uh, on top of the four by six at the bottom. So here we go. We're gonna cut this out and uh, peel them out, rasp them up, sand it, and we'll be good to go.
Next up, we cut the two by fours that run the length of the table uh, here down to there and we're here down to right there. So these will support the tabletop uh, from underneath, give it a little extra support across the middle. And again, uh, Douglas fir, true two inch by four inch. And I've got the length cut for this 10 foot table and where I've placed the trestles on each end, uh, for me, it worked out to 75 and a 16th. Uh, now I'm going to sand it down. But I did borrow a planer from uh, my neighbor who does some woodworking. Everything else is skill saw, um, inexpensive $200 miter saw, but I would highly recommend you get a Craig jig if you do not have one. Um, you're gonna use them in all kinds of projects, not just this one. Um, I assume that you can look up the instructions on how to set it up properly. I'm gonna give you the settings that I settled on after running various tests on a piece of scrap that is the same as my stringer and i ended up at inch and a half uh on the on the column here and the depth on here i set all the way down to inch and three eighths and tighten down the stop collar so uh now i'm going to turn this thing over up on its side clamp this on and go to it So over here now, uh, ready to put this in and uh, the stringer in here. And I'm using some uh, clamps to, uh, to hold it in place. I, I decided to go with one half inch uh, off of uh, the outside face of this column for comfort of uh, the person sitting on either end. Uh, same thing down there, half inch off the outside face of the four by six. Uh, pocket holes there, ready to go. Um, original plans called for three. Um, I've used a little bit bigger screw, so I'm just gonna do two in each end. So here we are, uh, we have the trestles and the stringers all connected. The only thing that's not screwed together so far is the four x four, which that will take place right down here through the bottom of this four x six into here. So there's no visible screws or hardware. And we have decided to put uh, one inch wood button plugs on the uh, four on each outside. So this hardware, of course, under the table, pocket holes on the inside will be filled with pocket hole plugs and those will disappear, be sanded down and disappear. So no visible hardware um, when we're done, but this is where we are so far. Now we are going to start laying out our tabletop on top to decide what we want to do there. Starting with these enormous uh, 15 inch pieces of two inch thick uh, poplar and another one over there 
and then the 140 year old pieces of white oak. So this is gonna be interesting. All right, so change of plans mid project. Was going to just put these two uh, 15 and a half inch boards on the outside with mine in the middle. Uh, I did order them planed uh, at the uh, lumber supply place where I got them, and they did. I mean, it's a dang, almost don't even need any sanding. But um, the thing is, they're not they're, they're they're not perfectly straight. There's some a little bit of line on one side or the other. They're a little bit too thick compared to my 140 plus year old boards. So gonna have to be planed down again anyway. I borrowed a 12 and a half inch planer uh, from a neighbor of mine who uh, does some woodworking. And um, so these won't fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off about three inches or so. We're gonna make this 11 and a half instead of 15. And then I am going to uh, have an 11 and a half piece and a about a three or four inch piece take the three inch pieces that are left over put them in the middle and uh, Kind of separate the oak there when I'm done. All right got both of these boards cut down to 11 and a half the poplar took the uh, Remnants of each one which are almost exactly the same size or about a little less than a quarter inch off uh, put those in between the two very old oak boards and this is what we have for now. Again, um, I have built this thing with almost none of the tools required to do so. So uh, here's my table where I did the uh, layout and all of the ripping with the table saw. I have a uh, eight foot straight edge when I needed a 10 foot straight edge. Um, obviously, <laughs> just made a mess in here. Uh, built it mainly with my grandfather's very old Craftsman circular saw, uh, my father's very old folding rule. Um, did have a tape measure and uh, some new clamps and things. Um, a miter saw, that's, listen, it's cobalt, it's 10 inch, and it's uh, not what we need to get this job done. Uh, did have an air compressor for blowing things off. Um, leftover lumber that I'm still gonna use. And there's what we have so far on the table. But um, yeah, uh, stand to help hold the boards, the long ones. Didn't have somebody to do that, so I had to stand over there. And uh, actually have a drill that I use too. Um, I did have an uh, orbital sander from DeWalt and a um, 20 volt max cordless drill and screwdriver that I used. Um, my father's rasp, his Stanley rasp from years ago. I uh, did have some chisels. Uh, those are brand new. Square. Um, Diablo sander, uh, sanding pads and blades. And uh, using Type Bond, Type 3 wood glue. Type Bond 3. That's it. So, the planer that I borrowed from my neighbor, uh, the DeWalt 12 and a half inch. Uh, it's 400, 450 bucks, not gonna buy one for this one project. Um, so I went and bought some MDF uh, that is 12 inches wide and um, it is extremely flat and extremely, there's like side to side, top to bottom, 90 degree angles, everything. So it's perfect for making a planer sled that I will make um, after I cut this and then we'll put on some of the old boards and if there's cupping, we'll shim up around the high parts. And if there's bowing, we'll shim up under the middle, hot glue those in place, let them dry, slide through the planer and it keeps the shape of the wood but flattens the top. So uh, this is how we get some of those 140 year old boards perfectly flat. Let's do it. So while the uh, planer sled end is gluing up there and drying, I went ahead and threw one of these 140 year old oak boards on, uh, on there. And I know everything on this build is like to a grand scale. Uh, I've seen these things built online before, but they're all as 36 inches, 42 inches for small projects. I saw one six feet, haven't seen one 10 feet. So I don't know how this is gonna work out, but 
you can see how many shims it took uh, to shim up the high places. And while you see down here, it is touching right here. Uh, it was a, a gap over here. I split the difference on each end to not lose any more wood than we had to. But you can see now it does not wobble or move in any direction. And I've shimmed this thing up all the way down in the high spots. Some places took two shims. You come down on this end and you see this point is touching. So no matter where you push here, no movement anyway in this board. So we're gonna get a good flat surface on this one and then we'll turn it over, run it back through the planer and get a good flat surface on the other side. I can see plainly that this side is thicker than this side. This side is pretty uniform. Uh, I don't know if you can see that all the way across until it curves down and gets thicker right here. So uh, once we get a good flat surface on this side, we'll flip it over and run it through that way. But it does have, a, it did have a pretty big twist in it. We're gonna take that out with this planer sled. All right, we're all set up over here. Um, planer is set up, I believe. I have uh, rigged up <laughs> a little uh, shelf just so that there wouldn't be such a huge drop off from here to here on the table um, there's only a quarter inch drop off but at least it'll support it somewhat uh, back here I have some of those scraps under there with some shims uh, to support it and then uh, lastly my uh, roller stand um, and it is level across there so as we feed it in I'm gonna have to uh, to guide it from this point on and hopefully get my wife to catch it on the other end. So we're gonna make a pass and, uh, and see what happens. And after running it through the planer a few times, take a look at the bottom now. Look, and look, this thing has a little flex. This board, this board actually comes down a little bit right here, which is fine. It's a little bit thicker down the line there, you can see. But if you look down this board all the way, compared to before, I mean all the way down. This thing, no rock, no rock, no rock, no rock, no rock, and on the very end, no rock. Even though it looks twisted still, that's because this board is thicker on one side, but the bottom tight up in there. See that? Squeezing it, nothing. So, that means is now we can run it through without the planer sled and it will take off these high parts down to like right there. So we'll lose a quarter inch on this side, but we're gonna skip plane this and I'm gonna get it close instead of all the way because on the other side, too heavy to turn over, on the other side, you know, you got that brand new oak look and we wanna keep this 140 year old rough sawn look with the grease stains or whatever it is uh, in places. Definitely want some of the dirt to come off, of course, but we want to keep these saw marks that are going through here in the grain, in the, um, uh, across the grain, and those go all the way down the length. So we'd like to keep some of those. So we're going to take it down, not perfectly square uh, or perfectly flat across there, but you can see here also this one comes across up it's a good quarter inch to three eighths inch thicker on this side than it is on this side so we'll take off these super high points just let the planer touch the rest of it and keep some of that what's up buddy loud noise. <laughs> the loud noise was the planer you like that Wait, yeah and one more thing too um these planers these tabletop uh, job site planers this is 12 and a half inch dewalt um, model 
DW733. Um, they have this um, sawdust, or uh, yeah, I guess sawdust ejector, shavings ejector out the back, on the back side, and you better hook it up to something. I don't have anything to hook it up to, and I wasn't worried about it. I only have five boards to do, and I'm done. Uh, so, but I put this bucket over here and kind of aimed it at it and thought, hey, you know what, I'm gonna get lucky and catch 50% of it. Um, man, it did all of this, guys, all of this from that one oak board, that one board did all of that. Almost enough to make a scarecrow out of, right, Liam? Yeah. You're awesome. See? Look, it's this. Oh, I think You're it shot out fast. It. You're not aiming it. I didn't aim it right? See? Mm. <laughs> we'll fix that, right, buddy? Have a clean up man on site, too, right? Doing a good job, buddy. And we planed the other side, kind of skip planed it down through there. You can see we did leave a lot of the old uh, saw marks and stuff. Took off a bunch of the high places all the way down. 10 foot board and uh, we got the thickness good we're sitting right at just uh, uh, above like a sixteenth above an inch and a half so uh, inch and nine sixteenths and looks pretty good of course some of that uh, dirt in places we will get out with a, a brush sander and move it on now got this one all shimmed up uh, one of the three inch pieces I cut off of the 15 inch piece uh, boards so that it would fit through the planer. It's all shimmed up, hot glued, and once it dries, we'll get back to the planer. All right, we got these uh, got these two three-inch pieces that we cut off each end so that these guys would fit through the planer. And now I've got them cleaned up, and I'm going to join these two as best I can. Um, I ran a test uh, drill with the with the Craig setup um, to see what it was going to play out like, and you can see there the that's where the blue uh, Craig screw two and a half inch screw will end up in this board so I think we're good uh, I may uh, back it up just a little further I'm not sure but that's where we are right now and should be a good solid connection once we get that glue in there too so test job test board did its job this is I'll turn this thing into a jointer now by doing the edge. Hope it works. Okay, so as I was uh, trying to uh, put those boards up, uh, put those boards together, glue and screw, uh, the ends are just too bad, so and you're going to run into that um, from time to time if you don't have a jointer. So here's what I had to do. Look at all the shims in this thing. Um, I am uh, waiting for the hot glue to heat up, and then I'm going to glue all these things in place on my 10-foot planer sled and uh, run those through the planer and try to uh, joint this side using the DeWalt planer. And then once I get a good square side on... Uh, on this side, I'll flip it over, do the same thing. We'll lose about a quarter of an inch in width, but that's okay.
Well, it's a little unconventional, but <laughs> I got it worked out. I had to back the screws out and put in uh, some of these guys to bring this up flush. And same thing over here. And I've got some of these giant bar clamps that I'm just having to use in a very unconventional way right now. Um, but it's with the clamp on the end and running all the way down. It's a, a good seam all the way. Uh, very flush uh, the other side too as this is the back side I checked under here and it's the same way um, so just gonna let this dry up then I will put the screws in and we'll go from there you know I often wonder why when people post videos of them making a table um, that they say hey I've been making this over the last three to four weeks I'm thinking what are you talking about get in there and knock it out in a couple of days yeah, now I see why. Because the tabletop part, especially if you don't have like the joiner and all that stuff, it's almost impossible. I mean, you got all this, you know, you see the planed areas from the skip planing. I had a chip break off the end of the corner of this 140 year old board, so I'm having to glue it back. It's just one thing like after another. And it's another day with very little progress. Another day and back at it, um, as you can see, some serious planing going on. <laughs> um, I've got buckets full of, uh, of this and I'm telling you, it gets everywhere. Not an understatement. Uh, I've got these three center boards um, about where I want them as far as planing uh, and, uh, and also standing up and planing the edges to take out some gaps. Um, I may have one or two little more hits to do, but they're pretty much where I want them. After all, this is an outdoor table. It's not an indoor dining table. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get them lined up lengthwise and because uh, they are cut to length already and um, make it fit the best I can. Then we're going to glue these three center pieces together in one panel. And then I will, that will leave me with this panel here and this panel here to then glue on either side um, I just think it's gonna be easier to do it that way instead of gluing and screwing all at once um, take a, a little an extra day or so uh, for this part but that's okay okay well we are clamped up glued up and I used all the clamps I have. Um, you see all these videos with these, these guys uh, building these things in their workshops and you know, the same guys with the jointers and the other uh, equipment. And um, they have these things, these Bessie clamps. I have one, <laughs> cause that one was $50. So I have one, uh, I have a long DeWalt bar clamp. It's nowhere near the quality of the Bessie. Uh, but for this purpose, what I got to use. Uh, and I have a, uh, I even some from Harbor Freight, I mean, for crying out loud. Um, and I have a lot of DeWalt quick grips um, that I'm using as well, especially on the corners when it comes to the, these two boards, getting these things matched up and flush. Uh, and then I took a piece of the oak that I wasn't using, used it uh, across here, clamped it down to bring things up and flush. Same thing with an extra piece of four by six there. Same thing there with a piece of uh, one by four. Um, and uh, turned it up in ways so it was stronger and some uh, two by four um, Douglas fir that's uh, that's going to be on the end of the table. I'm actually using that as well down there. So you see it's kind of like all hands on deck for every single clamp I have. But the goal is to get these things all married, glued together, which we're going to let set overnight. I'll flip it over tomorrow and uh, do the pocket hole screws, put all of the pocket hole screws in, kind of uh, give it a little reinforcement. And we left the some of these sides up that have uh, this and down there, you can see some right down there, um, old worm holes or bug holes. And we've got some right there. These things are character. So we skip plane to this guy down and we left a lot of these saw marks all the way down but we wanted to leave some of that too we will go back and put some epoxy in here and sand that down as well um but i think it's going to look good so we're gonna let this dry overnight 
and we will see you tomorrow. Got the uh, center piece with the two white oak panels and the, uh, the poplar uh, that we ripped and put back together to go through the planer. The underside of it, and it is smooth from one side to the other, uh, all the way down, we're good. All of the plugs are in and smooth. Can't feel them at all. Um, they're not gonna be seen, but well, I'm not gonna spend any more time on this, even though there's some little areas where there's a little bit of glue here and there, but it's smooth. Um, I just wanted it to be smooth underneath. Oh, this is fun. Okay, this is the top of the centerpiece. Uh, and you see we got pencil marks to remove. We got quite a bit of glue to remove with sanders. Um, a lot of it is very smooth edge to edge. We do have this board when it was originally milled and you can see it's still, other than the parts that's been plain, it is still rough, uh, which we wanted to remain. We're gonna have to sand quite a bit of this one down to meet that one because this board actually curves down that way. Um, so, lots of sanding to do on this one. Wow. Time out, time out, sign, time out. Um, it's so long, I'm making this table so long that I started thinking about it and I needed some more support in the middle. So what I did was I went back and I measured these two two by fours here on either side are 75 inches long. So that was easy division uh, at 25 and one at 50. And then that's 25 there and um, we basically gave it a lot more support. I just used uh, two and a half inch pocket screws on each end, kept them all on the inside. That way from either end, when people are walking up to the table, should they come from the down lower level down, they won't see any uh, screws or connections anywhere because it's all on the inside here. I may or may not plug these when we get ready to get in place, but yeah, had to add some support because the tabletop is getting heavy. And we got 30 more inches to add to it. Woo. Okay, my goodness, what a mess we made. And that's just what I could scoop up. It's everywhere. But we have planed and planed and we are satisfied. Um, it is time to sand. We've got a little, few little high spots here and there on this old board because uh, it's just the way that thing is made. But 
what we were able to do was use a block to bring these guys flush. So flush, 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 flush. And um, we're ready to start sanding, but almost ready. We got to glue up first. We got to glue this board to these three center ones. Connection here, glue this board to these three center ones, connection here. So we're gonna do that tonight. And we're the ice cream man. We're gonna do that tonight and we're going to uh, let it dry. And tomorrow we shall sand and we shall make our cut on the end, clean everything up and add the end pieces. Little bit of a bow in this one. And uh, to pull it down tight for the gluing, I am using two 50 pound bags of cement because I had them stacked right there. All right, we are down to at least one of the last steps of the build, anyway, before we start the others. Sanding and all of that, preparing for stain, polyurethane. Um, we have the tops ready to go. This is the top, and this is the top, along with this. All the pocket holes have been drilled all the way down both sides, ready to go. We're going to glue up this side, glue up this side, glue down here, and glue down here. And then we're going to lay them down, squeeze them together, and clamp them up. So here we go. done listen i know it looks a little uh out of sorts or let's say less than traditional how about that but um i only have three of these big bar clamps all right now three of these guys two dewalt's and a messy and um i needed to pull some of these boards down in a couple of places. That one didn't go down as far as I wanted, but I'll take that out in sanding. So I did have these five bags of, uh, 50 pound bags of, of uh, quick Crete sitting around uh, for a project that I'm gonna start on in a couple of days here uh, for my child, um, elevated tree house, clubhouse thing. So what I did was, since I have those extra supports underneath, um, it's hard to see through the plastic, but the extra, two by fours running across. I knew it wouldn't cause a big bow in the table and I could use it as weight. So in order to pull these down and make this more smooth right through here, I, uh, I did use a hundred pounds over here and 150 over there. Hey, it's a little less than conventional, but you gotta make it work any way you can make it work, right? Got some clamps uh, flushing out some of the ends right here. And on the other end, I had to do the same thing as we glued these two outer boards to the inner ones, we will fill this with epoxy. Um, long split runs through here. Uh, we'll backfill that. But other than that, this thing's gonna be ready to sand and uh, well, in one day, but going out of town for two days. So uh, in a couple of days, we'll pick back up. And let's uh, take the clamps off, take the <laughs> cement bags off and Oh man, now I gotta flip this thing over. Here we go.
right, so base obviously completely done. Top, I think now, other than some fine sanding, is ready for um, next stages where we get ready to stain and polyurethane and stuff. 10 feet long, guys. Whew. 10 feet long. I saw a table uh, like uh, seven feet long, six feet long, six feet long today, almost half this for almost $3,000. This was 10 feet long, so you could probably double that price. Um, we went ahead and decided to go with the two by twos on the end instead of the drop down with the two by fours and then putting the two by twos under the top here to equal that. Just because uh, our chairs, not the greatest chairs in the world, but they would not slide up under here. And we want to be able to push the chairs in uh, for space. So I went ahead and uh, sanded down the two by twos, the Douglas fir two by twos, put them on the ends here, sanded all of this to make this match up. Uh, same thing on the other end. I think once we, we get the stain, it's gonna look really good. I did leave these, uh, these are pocket hold, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but um, these are pocket holes screwed in. It's kind of hard to see. Um, so I can, I can unscrew these, stain them, and then screw them back on to get a nice line here. So, um, and then last thing I did tonight was I did go out um, with a job I did the last couple of days. Took some money, uh, bought a DeWalt DW611 um, router compact router so there we go I have that puppy now and I went ahead and got two bits because I didn't know what I wanted to do on this on the top corners my wife said the, the sharp edge was you know it was too much you should bump up against it it kind of hurt she's right um, so I went with um, the one I'm using is the one inch it obviously has a quarter collet and uh, it's a half inch round rounding off. So what I did was, you can see here, took the half inch rounding um, and did that all the way around the table. And man, it looks good. It feels good. You can't hurt yourself. You can lean your, you can, uh, you know, you can lean your arms on it when you're eating and it's gonna feel good. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna do it on the bottom too. Um, Cause this is a sharp edge and I'm worried about when people get up uh, you know, bam, hitting your leg. So we're getting there with this table build guys. Okay. So we got the uh, bottom facing up right now. Went ahead and took off the end caps. Um, since I have not plugged these yet and, uh, used some three M painters tape to go ahead and, um, so my wife shows it off, go ahead and, and cover up the bottom of any of the cracks or, or what I think are cracks or, uh, what I think are the bottom of some of the knots that we're going to be pouring the epoxy in on the top. So now, all right, go ahead, honey, and flip it over. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next You're step, up. we got uh, the table turned over, got the ends kind of dammed up, if you will, uh, to kind of stop the flow of epoxy there. I also went through just so... Um, I'm gonna be kind of working with it kind of fast. So I went through and put a little dab of tape right next to like everywhere that I thought uh, was gonna do some epoxy. So um, just to make it easier to catch my eye and uh, pull me over that way. So uh, it's mostly knot holes, except for some little places like this. And then this one pretty good sized crack that's almost a quarter of an inch by the time it gets to the end. And I'll start pouring from this end and work my way that way. Let the air escape from down here and um, try to minimize bubbling that way. So um, that's what it looks like. Now we just gotta go uh, see if we can mix up some epoxy and, oh, that's right, face mask. Thank you, son. Gloves, that's right, we'll need gloves because this stuff is dangerous. So uh, we'll be wearing latex gloves and our, um, what we call our grocery store face masks during the pandemic, right? No, I mean, we wear these when we go to the grocery store. So here we go. Yeah, pretty much anywhere. All right, let's do this. 
Okay, so we're about ready to do the epoxy. I went with the general purpose uh, epoxy from System 3 and the general purpose epoxy number one fast hardener uh, because we want to get this done. Yep, we got some syringes. We're going to use some syringes to get this uh, epoxy into some places. So we got a little package of those. We did pick up a pack of uh, System 3 stir, uh, stir sticks wood sticks i did pick up um some um aluma dust pewter um aluma dust pewter and that is uh to color give it a little pearlescence and and, and color the epoxy as we um since we're going to be staining it in gray um of course we got masks uh we got okay baby go go inside for just a second okay all right, we got some, my three-year-old. Uh, we got some uh, some mask. Um, you got your mask. We got some latex gloves because this stuff this is, is my birthday. not. Um, this is my birthday. Yesterday was your birthday. Um, seven. Uh, so we have uh, we have this because it's this stuff's bad for you. Um, and we have a couple of little cups to do our measuring with, little tiny solo cups. And then we're gonna measure. Or we're gonna pour into here. Add in just a little bit of this pewter uh, we, dust, a little bit of dust. Pour and that stuff in there and then we'll use this a second. Close. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and get our masks and uh, and gloves on. And also, it's our syringe. But okay. after we say, um, actually, um, first day, which is on. Yeah. Um, all right, so this is uh, like anything else, it's, uh, it's two to one. It's a two to one ratio here. So, um, and I'm just doubling, double checking that. They said that at the store. I wear gloves, wear a mask, got it. Avoid skin contact, etc. Um, yeah, so. Yep, he said two to one. So, here we go. Whew. First time I've ever done this, so. Um, kind of scary. A little bit scary. Just got on my thumb. It would have would have gotten on my skin if I went for the glove. So, all right, and I'm gonna use a separate cup for the hardener because which has a consistency of honey, but you can smell right away that it is not. Honey, it's a very pungent. Back on up, buddy. Okay. All right. Well, they say it only takes a little dab of this stuff. So what we're gonna do, take another wood stick we're going to take a dab of it. All right. Yep. Getting that good, I don't know if you can see that, that good pearlescent gray. Leaving a 
lot of this gap. I'm working my way for the big end to the small end to let it force the air out as we go. Okay, well, I didn't make enough. Didn't mix up enough, obviously. Uh, some of them I did get, uh, it's, it's pretty flush actually right now, but on the back end there, it's not, it came down a little. Uh, some of these obviously dropped down, um, dropped down there almost all the way because of the crack on either side. I'm gonna have to keep pumping that thing. Uh, this one held on most of it. It's just a little cratered there. Um, some of them, you know, like these, this one, these, um, they were all good. This one, the back side there is good. It's got a little, it's a little proud on the end up here, a little bit cratered. Um, same thing here, just a little depression there. I have to top these off. Um, but I'm uh, gonna let it sit, cure and everything, and then uh, come back, mix up some more, and go for round two. Next morning, and we've got some uh, good, hard, cured epoxy here. And you can see I've got a lot of it over the edges um, onto the surface. And I got places where it did not, um, you know, it did not level out there and actually dropped down uh, as it settled in. So I'm gonna uh, take the orbital sander. I have a 60. 60 grit on there, which is what was recommended. I'm going to uh, try to remove all of this uh, surface stuff before I go um, and fill back in where it needs to uh, to fill in, and then I'll do it again. But um, that'll be tomorrow. So I've got several of these places where it dropped down pretty good. Uh, but I want to get it off the surface to reveal any other little areas that might need some as well. So here we go. Not too bad, um, two minutes. So uh, what we have now is you can see clearly where it has uh, where it has filled in flush with the surface, and you can see where it stops and starts dropping down. So I have a really good idea when I come back that I need to top that off with about an eighth of an inch. I need to refill the cracks, let them run again, and then we'll sand that again tomorrow. Well, we are topped off and it looks like everything's gonna be good to go except for two spots. So we're gonna have to do those again. Like see all these are, see the reflection, perfect. And over here, great, great. A little drop down there again. All of these, good to go. And some drop down there. I tried to use the last of the epoxy, but listen, within 10 to 15 minutes, this stuff turns into that, which you cannot pour or spread or do anything with. So uh, I got off all of it that I could, and I will just have to sand down the rest, but you can still see plainly there that that one dropped down again. So that's a pretty good cavern in there. Um, and once I check the backside, it's not leaking through. So I don't know, uh, it's just a big cavern. Big, big crack right through here and right through here that goes a long way. Maybe after, uh, since I can see a lot of it down in there, maybe I've dammed it up on either side and the next time it'll only take just a small amount of epoxy. But everything else is uh, proud, above board, and we'll be 
good to go, except for those two spots. So we're gonna let this dry another probably 10 to 12 hours, maybe 24, and we'll pick it up then. All right, so transition back over to the base real quick uh, while some more epoxy is drying in the knot holes and cracks on the tabletop. Um, I, I don't want any hardware showing anywhere, like because we have a notch in that, and, you know, everything is uh, pocket holes. And, and these guys, uh, the original design called for a big wedge to go right here, but our last name is Hamilton and I kind of like the H on the end. <laughs> it's subtle and uh, no one's probably gonna notice it but me ever, but um, I went ahead and sanded off the, uh, the marks um, I made a big mistake over here because I'm using the, these one inch buttons. I went ahead and glued some in and then went, oh God, I haven't sanded that. So I'm gonna have to do that with um, a sanding block um, around those things. Won't be easy, but take a few minutes. So I went over here and got the DeWalt um, out and, and uh, sanded the, the, the marks off. And now I'm just gonna glue in um, these buttons. And these things, the only place, believe it or not, I could find them. Not at Rockler, not at Woodcraft, not at some uh, place like that, um, was Lowe's. <laughs> so uh, they're one inch buttons for my uh, one inch holes made by the Forster bits. So Forster bits, there you go. Um, gonna finish sanding this off and gluing these guys in and I'll clamp them up, let them dry. Then we're gonna stain this thing. All right, so we got our, uh, our one inch button caps on um, all the way around, glued on and dried. Look great and uh, cloth down. And this is a point where I kind of step away from the whole thing for a little bit because um, I just built it. My wife makes it pretty and she is getting ready to stain it uh, right now. So you too, buddy. That's right. Here we go. One coat uh, of the gray from uh, General Finishes. We, uh, we wiped it off and we're gonna let it dry. It's wet right now, so that's uh, it's probably gonna be a little bit lighter than this. Um, and the two end pieces there for the tabletop. But buttons look good. They came out good, even though they're oak and uh, the wood is Douglas fir, can't really tell. So, um, really like how that, really like how that came out, how it looks. So here we go. Um, we're gonna call it a night, we'll let this uh, dry, let the epoxy cure, we'll come back and take a stab at it again tomorrow. Well, another morning and uh, another sand down. So, wow. All right, I think I have uh, the epoxy uh, where I want it. Uh, I do have a couple of little places that uh, might drive some people nuts, like you got a little bubble that bursts there. Um, most of the spots came out flush and perfect. This one, still, uh, still not, but <laughs> not, but. I, I think I'm gonna leave it because the surface is right there um, and it's glossy and I like that. And you know what? Everything else on here is smooth as glass. I want a little of the old to come through. Not just excuses, I promise. That's why I left saw marks um, all through here. Those kinds of things that I made sure to not plain away and uh i'm gonna leave that for character let's just call it character okay 
All right. Um, so now we're gonna flip it over and clean and, it the back. Uh, we got it flipped over. Take all this painter's tape off and see if we had any run-throughs. Uh, didn't do too much in the cracks with epoxy, so we should not have. Um, can't wait to check some of these knot holes though. Okay, we ran through the uh, progressions here with, uh, we didn't do the full scope. We did 60, uh, 120, and then 220 uh, on the back because you know I don't want it dining table smooth. I mean, it is an outdoor table, uh, but man, 220. It glassed it right up. I mean, that is so smooth. So, um, and even the white oak, which you would think would take uh, forever. It didn't. Uh, when running through the progression, 60, 120, 220 grit. Another day in the books, another day closer to wrapping this up. My wife has uh, put on a coat of stain. We're trying something out on this side. Um, still got a lot of work to do on that, but we can't do the next step until tomorrow. Uh, we stained this yesterday and she has come back and applied that technique to it with the, um, it's an oil-based gel stain. So she came back with oil-based uh, satin enamel white paint and did a technique to give it that gray weathered look, which I just think it turned out fantastic. I love it so much. And we're gonna tackle this tomorrow, see if we can get one step closer to where we wanna be on this. All right, so here's where we are. We don't know what to do with um, with the top. Um, we've had people say, leave it alone, just top coated. Um, you know, leave the base gray and the top that. I don't. I don't. I mean, I want to do something to it. Um, the 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 bottom is where we tested kind of everything. Um, the epoxy came out great. Um, looks looks really good, filled what it's supposed to fill. Everything's nice and smooth and flat, except for our one little favorite spot right here that we're leaving for some character. <laughs> um, the crack, um, the Kraken, as my son calls it, uh, came out great and uh, even uh, filled all the way down to there, but there'll be an inboard on, so you won't see it. So, didn't want to do. So what we're gonna do in the meantime, because we can't take up the garage like this anymore. Look at this. Let me get a wide view. Look at this. I mean, those belong in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and put it in place around there under the pergola. It's protected from the weather. We're all good. And uh, we're going to leave it there for about six weeks. Cover it with some oil cloth to protect it from anything there's no make sure no rings no nothing on it that's going to affect the stain later has been reclaimed so the table is actually where it's going to go so part of the mess we are doing a lot here but I'm going to take you guys up kids destroying the backyard and that's where it is going to reside all right we got we're coat gonna, number one going yeah, on we're doing a thin coat first 
thin coat first and then we're gonna build it up and yeah it. and the epoxy's holding up pretty good there uh looking pretty good so we're using a walnut. looks like a crack but it's smooth and solid we're using a walnut gel stain and we're cutting it with some mineral spirits because we want to go light and then get build it up to darkness right because we don't know for sure how dark we want it to go this is why i'll let her do all the stain stuff because i have no idea what any of that means but yeah this is where we are and also having different types of wood we don't know how much it's going to soak in and so right. we're just layering it right all right all right hop in the pool buddy and one coat on so i think it looks phenomenal with the weathered gray on the top and of course the weathered gray uh, little breadboards or end, end caps will go right there so tie that part together i think the epoxy came out great super smooth pearlescent still got my little shiny spot right there that i love I think it came out so good. So good. This is why I let my wife do these things. Because I can't. But, wow. One coat. And here are two, my two 140 plus year old boards. Blends right in. Beautiful. And it's wet. It's going to be a little bit lighter when it dries. Um... We're gonna let it dry. Of course, it is hot. It's like 90 degrees, 91 degrees out here. Even though we're in the shade, it's still hot. Plus we have ceiling fans going up above. So it's gonna dry pretty quick. We'll get a sense of what that's gonna look like and whether we wanna go darker or what we wanna do. So beautiful, beautiful. Hopefully be a family heirloom when we're done. Okay, not sure if you can see the sheen down here but it is there but there you go yep yep hooey <laughs> uh, amazing and this is what we used guys marine spar varnish satin it is for uh basically you put it on boats <laughs> but holy smoke look at that and this is one coat we are going to do a second coat later on but um done for the night this is one coat look at that isn't that crazy wow and the epoxy now you can actually see the pearlescence down in there which is what i was hoping for all along got the pearlescent stuff there got it over here and it's got the shine you can see as i move the camera over that all smooth and uh, even the, the crack that we filled with the epoxy smooth there you go wow a little bit of uh, some spots right in the center uh, where it's still a little wet but you see this area over here is more what it looks like not right not the super wet part but, uh, there you go and here we are ready for Tomorrow night's little dinner party. There'll be a chair uh, right here, of course, at the end. Uh, but here's what we have. And you can kind of see now the sheen uh, on the trestles and definitely on the top, even all the way out here um, on the end. Uh, my wife went ahead and put a uh, runner with some, some, some table decorations on it blue chairs uh, these are outdoor chairs that so be pressure washed and etc kept clean so that's why we went with that particular one and we already had them <laughs> um, so there that's what the table looks like guys I'm gonna sit here and eat that will be my view how about that watch the kids swim play and uh, eat my food here at my spot <laughs> this is my spot I get the epoxy bug holes down here on my end so um, yep pillow says on beach time and these things say relax and unwind 
life is better at the beach. <laughs> yeah. Sun, sky, sea, and sand, all these things. True. Um, so we're getting ready for tomorrow night's party and um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Took this thing, you guys have seen this thing go from, uh, let's get a wide shot, there you go. Seen this thing go from from idea and pile of wood to, uh, to this. So there you go, 10 foot farmhouse dining table. 140 plus year old white oak boards, making up these two center boards. You can see the difference in this board, and this board from the rest. There's my 140 year old oak and lots of family and friends can sit here and eat. So there you go. How about that? Kinda proud of it. Thanks for watching guys.